Hello everybody, my name is Charlie and today we are going to be walking through another DataQuest Power BI guided project. This one is called Visualization of Life Expectancy and GDP Variation Over Time. So once again, just to explain the setup, you can do this in DataQuest in the interactive pane that you can see right here. I, for the purposes of demonstrating it on a bigger screen that's easier to see in this video, I'm gonna be doing it using Power BI Desktop. So I'm gonna drag the DataQuest interface over here when we need to look at it, and then I'm just gonna drag it onto another screen so that we can see Power BI full screen. So uh, we're just gonna work our way through this. So starting with this first screen, we've got a little description of the project, and basically this is a, it's small, but it's essentially an end-to-end -end Power BI project. So we're gonna import some data, we're gonna do a little bit of cleaning, we're gonna do a little bit of analysis, uh, and then we're gonna publish a report at the end of it. So uh, we will start by using this data set, and I have already downloaded it, but if you need to download it, um, over here on this side, you can click on this and then click that little download button. That'll download the file if you want to work locally, if you're not working in the uh, in the DataQuest interactive pane here. So I have already done the downloading step. So now we just need to get the data and load it. So in Power BI, we're going to hit get data from another source in this case because it's a CSV. And so we'll select text CSV, connect. Sample data WS, we'll hit open. And we will hit load. So as you can see, we've encountered a bunch of errors. That's pretty expected for any real uh, data science project the data is rarely coming to you in a perfect state so uh, let's hit view errors and start digging into this and so while that's setting up uh, we're going to move on to the next screen and the next screen is basically charging us to fix the errors that we're encountering here uh, so specifically we've got problems with a life expectancy column in terms of data type and we've got some errors there and then we also have some errors in the year column and it looks like we need to replace those with the value 1919 so let's dig in and do all that so let's go to our data view and we want to click home and the navigational ribbon up here go to transform data just as we have in the past and here we can see all of our errors highlighted um, so we clearly, we have a bunch of errors in the year. We need to replace those with 1919. We've got the life expectancy issue. Um, and we can also see that that data type is not correct. So let's just dig in here. So <clears throat> this is our actual data set and we can see highlighted issue right there. So let's start with the year. Let's go to replace errors and we will replace with that value that DataQuest gave us which is 1919 and it looks like we're all set there now over here life expectancy uh, we can see that this is a text column rather than decimal which is what it should be the reason it's a text column is because we've got these errors um, but they're not showing up as errors they're showing up as NA so we need to actually replace well actually so we could do this a couple different ways but maybe the better way to do it is we're going to switch this to decimal that will turn them into errors and now we can just do replace errors with null we could also have replaced the value na with null or something like that first so there's a couple different ways for us to approach cleaning this data but we're going to do that so that is cleaned up and while we're in here, it's always a good idea to take a look at a couple other things. Just kind of give the, the data set a scan here. So let's say we've got what looks like an index column. Then we've got countries. We've got the year. We've got population counts, GDP per capita, life expectancy numbers, region, OECD. I'm not sure what that column is. G77, again, not sure. 
longitude, latitude, income. Okay, so pretty straightforward. So we want to remember to always close and apply when we're finished working on our data and let that save. And actually, it's also good practice to remember to always save our project. So let's save this as Power BI Sample Project 2. Lovely. Okay, so let's hop back into the DataQuest interface. We've done these, and so let's see what's next. All right, so we need, this is a little bit more of cleaning and transforming. The That country column actually is titled name, so we want to change that. Life exp isn't as valuable as an explanatory category as life expectancy, so we're going to change that. And G77, that was one of those true-false columns. We're not going to use that, um, so let's just toss it. So let's go back into transforming our data and make those changes. So this one needs to be renamed country. There we go. We want to change this to life expectancy. And G77, we can just Oops, up here, remove. And we should be all set there, so let's hit close and apply. And again, we can move on to the next step. So step four, now we're already ready for analysis and visualization. So we're gonna do a scatter plot with year and life expectancy. My, my session is timed out. I'm not going to reload this because I'm not using it anyway. Uh, but obviously, if this happens to you, you could do that. Um, and you can also hard reload the tab if that doesn't work. But again, in my case, I'm not using it, so we're just going to move on. So yeah, basically, we're going to create this chart year and life expectancy, and then we're going to add a uh, legend to it so we can actually see it by region. Um, and we're going to take it even a little bit further by adding population size to these little dots so that larger population countries would appear bigger, which is pretty cool. So let's dig into doing that. So to do that, obviously, we need to move into our report view. And we are going to start by creating a scatter chart, which is this right here. So we'll double click that to do that. And then we need to put the life expectancy as the x-axis and the year as the y-axis. So let's get that going. Life expectancy x-axis, year as y-axis. Now this looks like complete nonsense. And the reason it looks like complete nonsense is because we're doing the sum of the year and the sum of life expectancy. We want to change that. So instead, we, we're going to click on this little arrow right here and then change that to don't summarize. Year, same thing. Don't summarize. And now, we've got the chart that we wanted, except that I reverse the X and the Y axis, as I love to do. So let's flip those around. There we go. That's the kind of chart that we were looking for. Sorry about that. So now we have the sort of the basic chart here, but we wanted to add the regions as a legend so we can get a little bit more uh, visual information. So let's go over here and we'll grab region and we're just going to drag that into the legend area. And so now we can already start to see a little bit of information and to get even a little bit more, we can define the size of these individual data points using another aspect of our data and that's going to be population. So let's drag that into size. And so now we can see a little bit of information about the population size of these countries over time. And um, if we go back to the DataQuest page for a minute, uh, we're asked, what does the visual show? And already we can see quite a lot from this, right? Um, I mean, we can see, for example, that Europe appears to have had pretty consistently high life expectancies over the past several centuries. Uh, Africa looks like a lot of African countries were kind of more in the middle and then seem to have been dropping closer to the bottom in recent years. Asia, we can see, started along the bottom life expectancy wise and has been shifting upward. 
So there's a lot of different things that we can see just from this visual alone. And obviously we could dig even deeper into this data, but we will leave it there for now. And let's move on to the next step. So this is step five at this point, and we're gonna look at GDP per capita variation and kind of see how that looks compared to what we just created. So in this case, we're going to use a stacked column chart and we're gonna add year GDP per cap and region to that. So let's get to it. We'll create a stacked column chart there and we're gonna add the year to the X axis. Yeah. The GDP per cap to the Y axis and region to the legend. And again, we're getting the sum of the GDP per capita, but in this case, that's what we want because we want the sum of each region for each year that we're looking at. And that's what we're seeing here. So if you're wondering why these bars look so thin, it's because generally this data set is going every 10 years, right? We've got 18, 1800, 1810, gap for 1820, 1830, 1840, 1850, 10 years every time, except for that 1919 that we added. So that was in the data quest instructions, but I suspect that that is actually supposed to be 1820 and fill in there. So let's just jump in and fix that really quick. We're gonna go back to the data view. We're gonna to go to transform data. And in year, we can just do replace values 1919 with 1820. Okay. And let's do close and apply. Let's jump back over here. There we go. That looks much nicer, doesn't it? Okay. So I think that um, we discovered a little issue in the data ourselves and that's great. And so now we have a much cleaner and easier to read looking GDP per capita chart. So we have completed this screen of the guided project let's move on to screen six so now we want to create a page and we're going to we're going to copy these two visuals there and we're going to add a slicer and mess with the interactivity a little bit so let us hop over and do that so the first thing we're going to do is just for the sake of sort of clarity we're going to copy these two charts And you get, there's, a, there's various ways to do it, but you can just hit Command C. And then we're gonna go to a new page and Command V, boom. We've got our charts in here. So the next thing that we need to do um, would be to sort of align them in a way that makes sense. In this case, they're already aligned. They're pretty much exactly the same size, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. But if yours aren't aligned, get them nice and aligned, get them looking good. And then we're gonna drop in a slicer. Whoops, that is not what I meant to do because we don't want to turn this into a slicer. We want to add a new slicer. Yeah, there we go. That's what we want to do. And this is going to be a region slicer. So very quickly, we can see what this does. We can just take a box very quickly and see the data for that region specifically. So that's useful. And we might want to change the way this looks visually. So something we could do, for example, is to go in here and we could change it. Right now it's a vertical list. Uh, the data quest project guide asks us to orient it horizontally. So the options in Power BI have actually changed a little bit between the version that's in data quest and the version that I have. So there's not an orientation option, but we can change this to, for example, make it a nice drop down menu and it becomes very horizontally oriented and we can still have this drop down to sort of select the thing that we want. Okay, so we've added our slicer and we've made it nice and horizontal. That's good. That's what we wanted. And so the last thing that we want to do or that we're asked to do for this screen is to edit the interactions. So specifically, we're going to select Asia on this chart and we're going to change how the interactions work with this chart. So to do that, we need to go up to this ribbon up here to format edit interactions and then we're going to hit this so that no interactions 
are happening there. And you can see now we have Asia selected down here, but we're seeing all of our regions up here. So there we go. And let's move on to the next thing, which is just to share your hard work. So save and then publish. So we are going to save our project again. We did already save it once, but of course it is always a good idea to keep doing that, especially when you're finished. And then we want to publish it. So we got to go back to home and we're going to hit publish. And I'm going to publish it to my workspace. And it is publishing. And we've got success. So I'm just going to click open Power BI sample project two. And then I'll pull this over here so that we can see what's going on. And now we can see we've got this right here in Power BI. And so this is something that I could share with anyone in my organization, could add to a dashboard if I wanted to do that. So there's all kinds of cool things that I can do from here as we learned about in the DataQuest course that covers working with the Power BI in this interface. Um, and that is pretty much the end of this project. But if we jump to screen eight, there are a bunch of suggested next steps. So let's take another look at our project for a little bit and, and talk about some of these next steps. So there's a lot of things that we could do here. One thing that we definitely should do is clean up the visuals and the titles and stuff before you were actually presenting something like this. You'd want to do something like fixing these titles and fixing the capitalization, um, you know, region up here, lowercase, a year down here, lowercase. It's all very inconsistent. So these are things that we would want to fix before we actually were to present this in any kind of formal way. We might want to change the colors. That's obviously also something we could do. And we could also look at this information in different ways. So for example, one thing we could do is, let's look at this chart. And we could do average life expectancy for each region. And that gives us a different visual, right? It kind of cleans it up a little bit. So if we wanted to look at this data specifically by region rather than by country, and we didn't want to see all those individual country dots, now we've got this nice region only um, depiction of the average life expectancy for each region over time. And we still have our nice population size bubbles showing us the size of the different regions, which is pretty cool. You can see the population growth in the Americas, for example, over time, uh, Asia's population exploding in the second half of the 20th century. Well, maybe not exploding. It was high before. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of cool things that we can do. And there are a lot of ways that you could take this further. So there's a couple other challenges in the DataQuest project if you want to tackle those. Obviously, there's also quite a bit more going on in our data here. We didn't really use um, any of the geographic stuff to create maps. So we could create some cool map visualizations with this data. We could use this income information that's here to do some level of analysis, at least with the most, this looks like this income data is from 2017 and it's not numeric. So that might be a little bit challenging to work with, but that would be an interesting thing to dig into. So yeah, there's a, a ton of different things, a ton of different ways that we could take this project from here, just take it to that next step. But for now, we will leave it there. Thank you for joining me for another DataQuest project walkthrough, and I will see you in the next one.